How about that? These are all what are called mini game series war games. They're for fast single player or two player short campaigns, uh, mini war games, folio series, mini series folios. Some are actually labeled solitaire. I've read that you can play many of them solitaire despite their labeling. The ones that are labeled solitaire are designed for solitaire. This is fictional. This is about a uh, your um, uh, Mars, I think Mars uh, Marines, and you're trying to fight a war on Mars, insurgency on Mars. This is fictional. The rest of these are all historic. These are actual real Rogers Rangers were America's first real commandos. And you go on, you actually go on commando raids, cards, dice, encounters. It's hard to believe they're all in this little Ziploc. I hope they are. If they're not, I'm going to be a little upset because I don't know how else I'm going to get the cards and the counters. So this, I decided some of the war games I have are just way too complex. They really are ideal for multiplayer. And they take hours to set up, hours to play, hours to put away. Or not hours, but... And these just sounded right up my alley as Solitaire War. Yep, look, there's our... So you got, you got your commando chips. There's your little cards for your missions. Holy cow, that's sweet. And then you have something to put it all in when it's punched out. The maps are supposed to be small, small enough for you to run your games on one tabletop, card tabletop. There's the back. These are brilliant. Uh, these are all by a company called Decision Games. Um, yeah, look, here's the rules, the rule book. Scenario rules, because this is, uh, again, these are a commandos unit uh, that actually... Again, most of these are based on historical, real uh, uh, wars or missions. Or The French and Indian War was raging along the frontier of Britain's North America colonies. American colonists fighting alongside the Brit regulars developed a new form of soldier. The Ranger was the home of the irregular warfare dominating the conquest of Upper New York. So this is commando warfare in 17... Seven, uh, 1754 to 1763 American commando units raiding in the French and Indian War. That is just going to be too damn cool. So they're all similar to that. This is actually, uh, was uh, there was a book written years ago after World War II, and they made a film in the 60s about this particular thing. Of course, the film in the 60s, you know, obviously poetic license, played fast and loose with the truth probably, but... Uh, they were commandos in Norway fighting the Germans, commandos, uh, and they ultimately knocked out a heavy water treatment plant. They were making heavy water. Uh, great film with uh, Douglas, with um, Curtis Douglas. Brilliant film. Kurt Douglas, excuse me. So you can see they come in these little envelopes. They're called Folio Games, miniseries. Uh, I, have the, uh, I have another one coming from directly from them. Um, these I ordered from another company that had a pretty decent price for all of them, so it was worth it. But I ordered directly from DecisionGames.com uh, their Solitaire Viking. Uh, same thing, you have a you have a set of Vikings that are uh, raiding the UK, and uh, they're actually named real real named Vikings. And you go on raids and you try to achieve reputation as well as it's like holy cow, that's incredible. So. Um, this is Rome. Of course, anything that has to do with Rome combat, Rome warfare, I am absolutely... This is the reconquest of Africa. Uh, Heroes of the Telemark, again, uh, commando units. The Congo, this one happens to be during the 1960s. 1964 condo. <coughs> Con uh, commando minigame series. There are two decks of cards. So now you're mercs in the Congo. I believe it's the French uh, again. This happens to be non-solitaire, but I think you could play it solitaire. This happens to be a uh, airplane con combat. So this is uh, what's called the Battle of Britain. So you're defending Britain from uh, the German invasions. You got airplanes instead of commandos, and again, it uses these little mission cards, which kind of can can mess up your plans. And then, of course, this is Mars. Uh, unbelievable. Every one of them have roughly 40 die cut counters, 18 cards, four page rule books with scenario instructions. They're all, I'm sure, very similar rules. So once I've played one, I'll understand how to play the others. They'll all have a little bit of different stuff. And uh, by Decisions Games. 
And this one, of course, okay, no sweat there. And of course, let's see what this is. This just came as well. I had to order one of them from a different company because I couldn't get them all from the same game company. This one, I think, came, oh yeah, this is one I was very excited about because it's also, you know, you can play them all solitaire, but the ones that say solitaire are designed strictly for solitaire play. And again, I, they were all so affordable. I went ahead and ordered almost all the ones I could find that were remotely interesting to me historically. Merrill's Marauders, they're commandos in Burma, 1943 to 44 in Burma. Same concept, you get a small map, 40 tokens, uh, 14 event cards. So they're all gonna be a little different rules wise, but I think once I get the rules down, I'll be able to pick up and play any of these. So let's take a look at this one since I got it open. All right, I've really enjoyed tabletop gaming more than ever, uh, honestly, since even since I was a kid. Mostly as a kid, we played role-playing games. We played some traditional board games. I had buddies that liked war games, but I could never quite get into those. They were kind of above my head. I didn't own them, so I couldn't study them or know what I was doing. Uh, but we'd play Risk. But we played a lot of tabletop sports simulators, which obviously I do on my channel. But since coming back to tabletop gaming of in the last few years, I have tried some war game stuff. Um, and like I said, most of them are remarkable. They're just too sophisticated. They take too long. I mean, there's the map for a solo game. This is brilliant, right? So I'm going to have my little commando units. I probably have to move through. This is, happens to be... So this happens to be uh, the, the, probably the sources I have to move through and sabotage, right? This is incredible. This is going to be amazing. And the Viking one, same thing, except it's a, it's a map of the UK as you move through the coast of the Vi Vikings, basically. And I guess the new twist on the Viking game is there's reputation. You have to not only succeed, but you got to maintain kind of your reputation so your soldiers and things will... Uh, so you kind of got a high score going or something, it sounds like. So very cool. So here's the cards. Rogers Rangers. So a card could say something like this. Supply check. You may expand one supply unit to gain one op. If you do not expand the supply unit, then lose one op. So that's pretty cool. So you're going to have to make tough decisions. So one of the things that intrigued me was you have to achieve this, but there are these random card selections that force tough decisions or can disrupt your strategy that's what makes it i guess a decent solitaire game is you got these variables that kind of mess you up so very cool then we got rogers rangers here i don't know what these are these are only four these must be the actual rangers no these are mission cards rescue scouting frontier and raiding and big campaign so if i'm playing this mission i guess i just set it down and that's what i'm doing and then there's an actual big campaign. Oh, this is sweet. This is sweet. So these are mission cards. And these are event cards. And then you have your 40 counters. Obviously, the green are probably your guys. And blue are, yep, hostiles. So hostiles, I, you probably shuffle these and set them face down. You don't know what they are, maybe. And then you flip them over and you'll see what kind of hostiles they are. There's gunpowder kegs, boats alert icons, recruit points, and then you have your commandos, one through seven commandos, plus you have Roger, or you have Rogers and Putnam, and then on the enemy side, you have a guy named Lang's, Lang Laid, and a militia unit, so war games that are this simple, this is the kind of thing you can pack up, take with you on, on vacations, you know, it's kind of thing you can pack up and take in a hotel room, but I'm looking for that kind of thing I can play in 45 minutes and then string them together over the course of a week and I've played a campaign, track notes, those kind of things. And here's a, what is this? This says, thank you for your Amazon order from Fine Games. Jason, thanks. Fantastic, very nice guy. Michael Dean. I think I've ordered something from Michael Dean at Fine Games a while back, but I can't remember. But uh, I ordered almost everything I could from, from Fine Games on Amazon. And Decision Games is quickly becoming my go-to war game company. Because most of them are uh, simple like this. Um, 
and many of them are folio games that are solitaire design but like the the uh, quad the d-day quad box uh, is all four of the d-day campaigns in one box they have a lot of big box games now too that are in the you know higher order but you can see how this is just decision games right here all games from them the prices are absolutely fair very fantastic obviously the big box games are much more expensive for instance Highway to the Third Reich is $130. It's a giant box set, 400 counters. You know, it's an epic. Retirement liquidation sales. Oh, my dog. He's retiring? Well, then we want to get on that, man. You, If he's quitting, we got to get on that and order some of these sweet games. I didn't know that. And then I had to order Vikings directly from Decision Games as he did not have it in stock when I looked. So all of these are Decision Games. Every single one of these are decision games. That's amazing. Wow. Very cool. Anyway, nice little note there from them. Uh, and I'm set. <laughs> Once I learn how to play one, I think it'll be easier now to play a, a, a next one and the next one. Um, as I've been getting more and more into these, um, these kind of uh, war games. Merrill's Marauders, and again, part of it is the historical accuracy. Obviously, Phobios Rising is not historically accurate as it's a Mars campaign, uh, planes, and then a lot of these are Merc things. This one's a little bigger than that. I think this is more than Mercs. This is Units. This is uh, Commando, and then this is Units. This is Rome against Af Africa, the retaking of Africa. Um, I can't believe I got them all this quick. I expected to get them in pieces, but he packed them all together and sent them all at once. It's so cool. I didn't know that. Uh, this is uh, Africa, 533 to 534 AD, the reconquest of Africa. So this is Flavius Belisarius. It's called Belisarius' War. Is a two-player game of the Vandal War. Now, um, again, you could play any of these games single by just deliberately playing each team in turn and be fair about the... Uh, the process. I mean, I've done that with other games that aren't solo games. Each player has a unique deck of campaign cards. They generate recruits, movement abilities, special bonuses of combat, and historical events. Some of the cards include naval land campaigns, organize and ext uh, extricate, ambush, and procopius. Combat is resolved via a quasi-tactical procedure. Very, very cool. Right there. I think this was 10 bucks, 12 bucks. I mean, I, they, they just weren't expensive, so I snatched them. Uh, and that one didn't say solitaire, but I really, I, I had to get, I had to get the uh, Rome, the Rome one I could find. <clears throat> oh, those are the rules. So I'm not certain what I paid for this one, but uh, this one is, um, I don't see a price on it. But again, most of them are between uh, eight and fourteen dollars, I think. So, uh, and I think I got them all a little cheaper than that, as Amazon gave a kind of a discount on the sale. So, very cool. Let's take a look at this one more time. Uh, this solitaire game is part of the Raider game system. You command Ranger forces conducting missions as directed by uh, by strategy cards. You recruit leaders like Robert, Robert Rogers and units including historical ranger companies that British Light Infantry then purchase weapons and tools to equip them. Each expedition leads you along trails and rivers to engage French and Indian forces generated by the game system. Event cards bring a wide range of actions from the mobilization of enemy forces to the wilderness challenges you must overcome all of them to reach your objectives. Damn! I didn't even know that much about it when I bought them. I just I bought them because they were supposed to be simple, and they were they were rated well by Amazon reviewers. And who would have thunk it, man? America's first commandos were in the French and Indian War. Of course they were, right? Didn't uh, Mel Gibson play one of those commandos in uh, the Patriot, the Patriot or something, whatever that movie was called? So there you have it. That is. Um, some of the some of the stuff out there, gents, for uh, maybe not role playing games, but are definitely within our hobbies, uh, boundaries, right? Of of uh, especially something like this. In a way, this can be almost a board game slash role playing solitaire game as you get into these commandos ex executing their raids. 
uh, between missions, you know. Very cool. Uh, and it's not, uh, it's four page rule book. That was the other thing that intrigued me. In four pages, we should be good to go. There it is, four page rule book. These are the counters. Uh, there are 20 uh, counter types, the leader, rangers, light infantry, pioneers, ranger militia, Indians, ranger camp, light guns, those are cannons, supply caches, gunpowder, hatchets, long rifles, boats, leaders, hostile units have leaders, CFMs, which is uh, Campon France de la Marine, so French Marines, regulars, and Indians. Objective markers are alert or RP, recruit points. Staging areas, man, this is going to be fun. I'm hoping to run a couple of these, actually live, uh, not live, but on the channel and put up some videos of, of these solitaire games, especially especially Vikings, uh, the Vikings game on this channel on Roleplay Cafe. So stay tuned. Uh, that is going to be great fun. And that is, it, when I saw that, it, it came out in 20, I think they said 2019 it came out. I had never heard of any of these games, uh, so I had to order it directly from them. But when I saw a, a, a video on YouTube, I said, holy cow, that's right up my alley, especially in the middle of writing Dark Age of Man, where much of Dark Age of Man happens in this kind of pseudo-fantastic Vikings period in the UK. So I thought, what a great game to play, uh, solitaire war game. So thanks for watching. Goodbye.